Hi, I'm Molly. I'm new here. Hey there. I, I'm Molly. I'm I'm new here. It's it's nice to meet you. I, I'm Molly. I'm I'm new here. I was the new kid a lot. I moved around eight times and was in four different elementary schools by the time I got to sixth grade. Somehow, I managed to figure out how to fit into each place, and then it was time to leave. Even when I landed at my final elementary school, it was soon time to transition to middle school the next year. Middle school is the time that no one fits in. <laughs> but we're all trying our hardest and watching each other for cues on how far to roll up our Sophie shorts, what makeup is cool, and how to wear our hair. After all the moves my family made, we landed in Orange County, California, the OC. Most of the girls I went to middle school with looked like many real housewives and had grown up together. They had stick straight platinum blonde hair, they all played soccer, and somehow knew exactly how to apply that limited to glitter eyeshadow perfectly on those lids to sparkle. I had been the new kid for so long that I just wanted to do everything I could to fit in, even if it was just gonna be for a short period of time. But compared to them, I was more of the before the makeover of Anne Hathaway in Princess Diaries. I don't know if you've noticed, but I have curly hair. Yes. A little different than those mini housewives. My ringlets showed up sporadically since I was a baby, but middle school is where the frizz-filled spirals really made their debut. And like most people, I always wanted the type of hair I didn't have. The grass was always greener on the other side, they say. Even my mom, with not one curl on her head, did everything to get curls in her hair. Supposedly, I was a lucky to have curls, but I too wanted what I didn't have. That Topanga hair, the brush your fingers through the top, straight, long, luscious hair. Those girls who could toss their hair back and forth like an herbal, herbal essence commercial. They had it all. They seemed carefree because their hair didn't take hours to dry or pounds of product to hold together. Having the ability to have your hair air dry and you'd know exactly what it would look like, the dream. But I had curly hair, the kind of hair that hurt when my friends tried to braid it because it was always tangly. So I did all the things I could do to my locks, including straightening it with one of those con air straighteners that barely kept it straight before even leaving the house and putting so much product in it to keep it from frizzing that it always looked wet. And if I did wear it curly, don't you worry, I strained those bangs that I definitely cut myself. <clears throat> I went through years of me trying to look like anything but what I was because I always felt like the new kid trying to fit in with everyone else. For years, I actually got my haircut as if I had straight hair, pretending I would maintain said haircut, pretending for an hour that I was like everyone else who had straight hair. I walked out of every one of those haircuts feeling excited to fit in at school, so cute and confident, but with the first wash, my fake straight hair would be a distant memory and I would look in the mirror and grab my Pantene mousse to tame my frizz-kissed curls. I was a new kid again when I moved to the Bay Area for college, but this time I started noticing more and more people wearing their naturally curly hair. These people looked confident and cool, like Topanga and all those blonde haired soccer playing girls I grew up with. I wanted to feel like that. And thus my journey began to find the perfect curly cut. I decided no more fake straight hair. I was in a new place with new people and it was time for a new me. My first attempt at owning these spirals was with a hairdresser recommended by a friend who was part of the coiled locks crew. Hers were slightly different from mine, but coiled nevertheless. My friend's locks were gorgeous, silky smooth, and seemingly effortless to achieve. Just what I wanted. I thought if she sees 
This hairdresser and her hair looks like that? I'm bound to look just like her. I entered the salon, nervous but excited to be trying something new. Owning the fact that my hair needs were a little bit different than a wash, a cut, and a blow dry. He started out with a similar pattern as my past experiences, but this time he finished it by drying my hair and then cutting each curl. This is how it should be done, people. I left that day more excited about my curly hair, a little more confident, but I washed it out. And as I did, I washed away everything good he had done. When I reached back out for help, I found out that he had moved away. He was gone. He made my curls bounce and then he bounced. I was back to feeling like a middle schooler fumbling with her hair product without a clue in the world. I guess he's allowed to move away, but I was back on the hunt for the perfect cut. A year passed and it was time to give attention to my ringlets again. Another friend recommended her hairdresser and I gave her a shot. This hairdresser exuded confidence and told me she loves the ringlet rich strands and has them herself, but she straightens them. I shared with her what I wanted and today I wanted something new, curly bangs. The process began and she began to chop my special spirals. I started to think, oh my God, this is getting short. Oh my God, like really short. Oh my God, shaking underneath my cape, but also not wanting to hurt my hairdresser's feelings. I casually brought up that like, um, hey, I, I, think, I think this is like a little bit too short. Um, as my ringlets bounced up to my ears. She assured me it's exactly what we talked about and not to worry. But at the end of our session, I was disappointed and hurried out with a thanks and promptly cried as soon as I left the salon. I texted her feedback a few days later that next time I don't want it this short. And she responded with, don't worry, hair grows back. <laughs> a brutal blow to this wounded curly headed soldier. I lost hope of finding that feeling I'd had one, just once before and a love for my challenging tresses. It took me a while to take another leap into the coil quest, but my desire to feel confident and carefree overtook me. So this time I went rogue and found a salon on my own and booked with a new person said to be a very good at the curly craft. I showed up on the day of my appointment and immediately was told I'd be seeing someone else. Already feeling so nervous and uncomfortable, I asked if this person knows about the twisted tendrils. They confidently told me he sure does. So I went in hoping for the best. A bald man with short, straight salt and pepper hair coming out of the sides of his head walks over to welcome me. I thought, okay, maybe this guy's like the best curly hair cutter I've ever met in my life. Okay, so I share some pictures of the look I'm going for and I tell him, let's do this. I put my trust in him as he hacked away little by little for an hour. I'm trying to stay cool. He knows what he's doing, right? Watching him take scissors to my wet hair over and over again, I'm starting to sweat. He starts blow drying my hair and burns my scalp and my hair starts to turn into the shape of a triangle and the bottom layer is somehow straight and it's so frizzy. I felt like I had steam coming out of my ears and my emotions finally overtook me and I said, stop. You don't know what you're doing. We're done here. I ripped off my cape. I grabbed my stuff and I offered to pay because I'm nice. <laughs> he told me it was no charge. So I slammed a $20 bill on the counter and I left. I stood up for my ringlets for the first time. Yeah. Thank you. With the little hope that I had left and adrenaline pumping through my veins, I remembered a friend with the kinkiest of coils gave me a recommendation for her hairdresser. I quickly went to her website and booked an appointment for five days later. It was a Friday morning. I walked into the salon in San Francisco and I was greeted by a full salon of people with all different types of coils and kinks and spirals, both cutting hair and getting their hair cut. The hairdresser I met with was a petite, energetic and kind woman. She started to ask me questions and touch my hair and told me how amazing my luscious locks were and my guard came down. I shared with her 
all of my previous awful experiences and what I was hoping for. And she took me in like a lioness cares for her cub. This experience was unlike all of the others. I didn't feel nervous. I felt taken care of. I felt empowered. I felt seen. I felt like I fit in. This woman is and will forever be my fairy godmother. <laughs> that day, I walked out of the salon loving how I looked for the first time in a long time. I felt carefree and cool. <laughs> I felt like me. Being different and trying to fit in has been a consistent part of my life. But as we all learned from the movie Mean Girls, fitting in isn't all it's cracked up to be. And with hair like this, I was born to stand out.